You won't want to miss Remotely Kyogen, Comedy Under the Virtual Stars, presented online by Kennedy Theater and the UH Ma Noah Department of Theater and Dance, April 23rd through May 2nd. Under the supervision of Master Kyogen Advisor, Shigiyama Senojo III, Dr. Julie Etsy and a student collective have created a suite of performances with ties to Japanese Kyogen. Known for poking fun at those in power, Kyogen has delighted and entertained audiences for over 600 years. It begins with a classic play presented by professional Kyogen performers in Japan, followed by new translations and adaptations of popular works, as well as completely new new works inspired by Kyogen. Revel in the endurance and adaptability of this comic genre while bringing much needed joy and laughter. For tickets, scan this QR code or visit showticks4u.com slash events slash Kennedy Theater. Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, 10.03. A few participants might still be joining us a little later, but let's have a start. Um, we are very grateful that you've been able to set aside an hour um, at, at the end of this very busy semester to join us um, for the main installment of the Japan Studies Association Spring 2021 webinar series. We're really delighted to have you here with us. Our guest speaker this afternoon is Professor Julia Zee, who is with the Department of Theatre and Dance at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Before I introduce Julie to you, uh, some of you already know her and as well as her inspiring work. On behalf of JSA um, and this webinar as organizers, I would like to extend our warmest gratitude to the Center for East Asian Studies at the University of Kansas and to Johnson County Community College for their generous and unwavering support for our Spring 2021 webinar series. I would also like to extend special thanks to JSA board members, Professor Paul Danscombe, University of Alaska Anchorage, and Don Gale, Johnson County Community College for their fantastic organizational skills and resourcefulness. Um, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today. Her, Julie Yezi, holds an, an MA in Musicology from Tokyo University of Fine Arts and Music, as well as an MA and PhD in Asian Theater. She translates, publishes, and directs Kabuki and Kyogen plays, and continues to practice and perform Tokiwazu narrative music, Nagauta, Shamisen, and Kyogen. She teaches practicum and lecture courses on traditional Japanese theater, seminars on contemporary Asian theater and Kabuki, multicultural directing, and experimental approaches to acting for Western actors. Her most recent publications include a chapter on Kabuki in the Cambridge History of Japanese Theatre, edited by John Saltz in 2016, and a special edition of Asian Theatre Journal on Kyogen, Spring 2007. That's actually, please check them both out. Um, I'm biased, but highly recommended. Um, her current research interests are uh, Kamigata Kabuki and early 20th century traveling Kabuki terms. Artistically, she's very interested in narrative story storytelling traditions, as you'll see from um, the uh, excerpts she will play from uh, the remote Kyogen performance. Um, so she's interested in narrative storytelling traditions and effectively harnessing the powerful union of narrative voice and physical action on stage. Um, before we uh, formally welcome Julie um, on the virtual stage, I would like to just mention a couple of housekeeping items. Julie's presentation will last approximately 40 minutes, after which she will answer the questions you have for her. Please, please, please do not wait until the end of the, um, uh, of the presentation to uh, type your questions in the chat. Please do it while they occur to you. So I'll be monitoring the chat and the Q&A function on this webinar platform. So, and I'll, I'll make sure that all the questions reach Julie. And one last piece of housekeeping item. Um, a recording to this webinar will be available on our JSA website, uh, and I will drop the uh, URL where you can access it. So without further ado, please welcome Julie Ezi. Take it away, Julie. Thank you very much, Maggie, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And I want to thank all of you for being here today. I'm sure it is a very, very busy time for all of you, end of semester. Uh, I appreciate you all taking some time and for giving me the opportunity to uh, present to you today and to kind of force me into um, 
soon after this production, doing a little reflection. Uh, so I will be talking about the design, implementation, and, the refle and then reflecting on Remotely Kyogen, Comedy Under the Virtual Stars. Um, some of you may have already seen the program. Thank you very much. And for those of you who haven't, I have a surprise for you at the end. Um, so to set the stage, I, I want to just spend a few minutes talking about our own program at the University of Hawaii. We have, since the 1960s, had an Asian theater program, which involves very in-depth, immersive kind of study with master artists who come and do guest artist residencies at the university, kind of bringing the, the field to the student um, here on the university campus. And this allows collaborative work between the students and the master artists, but also between the faculty and the master artists. And this generally um, culminates in a, a final full-scale production of a traditional form, but done in English, um, which opens up the audience and gives a more immediate connection uh, for those in the audience who don't speak the language of the original form. And this, of course, is then combined with coursework in history and literature and theory. Um, the intensive training with the master artists um, we, involves bringing them to the campus. They'll teach acting techniques. They will teach dressing techniques. Um, you'll see here a photo of mask carving in the last Kyogen in 2017. We did a one month intensive mask carving workshop where the students learned how to carve masks and the masks were used in production, ones that were made by our master artist. Um, we're working on Kyoga and Kabuki wigs now, learning how to, um, to maintain them, how to dress them. That's a fine art. It might take a while before we get there, but it's trying to train students to understand the, the, the the extent of what is involved in these productions and giving them hands-on training is at the core of the program. And then, as I mentioned, culminating in these, these full productions. Um, these are examples from our previous uh, experiences, our previous productions. Um, Wayan Listrik from Bali. We've done, of course, Kabuki and Kyogen from Japan, um, Jigju from China. And generally, every year, there is one full scale uh, Asian theater production. So it's in this context um, that I will talk about our work today. The third pillar of this, this artist res residency and the full scale production is outreach. Once we have these guest artists here and we have this immersive training and the production, we want to share it as much as possible with the community. So we will, we will do extensive outreach on Oahu and the neighbor islands, whether it be the master artists going out into schools, as you see above, one of our Balinese dancers doing a workshop or a demonstration with students, or touring to the libraries and, and schools on the neighbor islands, as you see in the bottom left, um, our, our 2017 new Kyogen uh, called Derailed that we did. Um, in the bottom right, we will also have our MFA students who have been involved in this master training then go out into um, elementary schools, junior high school, high school, and do workshops to begin giving students, younger students, an idea of what this training is like in their body. So in this context, um, the production for spring 2021 was supposed to be a Kabuki production, which I had been working on for two years. We all know what happened. Uh, so I rethought and said, OK, maybe we'll do an outside production, and I will call it comedy under the stars and we'll follow the the torchlight no tradition use led torchlights things did not go in that direction we couldn't still couldn't do outside performances so this became remotely kyogen comedy under the virtual stars um, i this was what great shower moment for me coming up with the word remotely because as i was thinking about the production it was very important I was trying to figure out how to feel honest about a production because it wasn't the Kyogen that I'm used to training, um, performing usually in a normal circumstance. So how could I really honestly portray this in a virtual setting and feel that it was okay? Remotely reflected the reality of the way we would be training and delivering the production, but also allowed me a bit of freedom to make it okay to extend Kyogen, to start with that as a core, as the root to the trunk, and to expand um, further into 
the realms and create new work, which is what happened. Um, for inspiration, I had been looking at uh, this website, YouTube de Aimasho, YouTube de Aimasho, and this was this has been going on since the very first week of the pandemic in Japan. You'll see the date here of the first one, March 1st, 2020. They still produce this week by monthly now. It started out weekly. Um, it's the Shigeyama Sengoro family of Kyogen. They're based in Kyoto. It's a live stream. It's free. It's a way for them to maintain contact with their large fan base um, in this time of no live performances, but also for them as performers uh, to to maintain contact, you know, and, and continuing to hone their own craft. Um, largely, the people who are engaged with this is what I call the middle generation. They're not people who I trained with, my teachers, not their parents, um, not their children. They're in their late 30s and 40s, and they're tech savvy. They've been operating websites um, to, to promote their fan base for a while. And the structure of this this program really struck me because I'll do a series of, of plays, but also have interludes where while people are changing, they're having they're chatting with each other, they're all related, they're giving great stories behind the scenes, or they're introducing costumes or talking about relationships between Kyogen and the city of Kyoto. So that was in the back of my mind as I was uh, structuring um, the program. The youngest of these, this middle generation of the cousins is Shigeyama Sennojo III. Uh, I've known him since he was about four years old. He has been involved in our UHM Kyogen productions uh, four times, including this one, Remotely Kyogen. Um, he, so he understands the university process, our goals. He is tech savvy. Uh, for the last 15 years, he's been writing his own Kyogen for the 21st century and other comic skits. So in addition to being Kyogen actor, he's also a playwright and he directs his own works. So he's the perfect person to bring into this uh, project because having a master artist is, is key and central to any of our programs um, that involve traditional Asian theater. A great plus is that he happens to be bilingual in English and Japanese, so that was important also because it cuts down the time that we'd have to spend on Zoom, uh, because if I were to translate for another artist, that would really extend the process. And he was willing to jump in and try to explore teaching in the virtual realm. This was a new thing for him too, and it was really fascinating for me to follow, um, to follow him and to see how he was adapting uh, to this whole process. So to begin the process in the fall, uh, we des I designed a, a course. Now, this was a, a two semester build to this production. Usually there's this extensive training uh, in embodied learning. We couldn't do that. So I thought, okay, we need to learn as much as we can about the art of Kyogen. We read plays, we looked at the structure of the plays, we talked about characters, we looked at costuming, how costuming works, the stage and staging of Kyogen, um, a little bit of the history and the, the milieu, who watches it today, uh, the idea that Kyogen always occurs here and now. You know, so many plays begin with that phrase, You see before you a person of this place. I am here and now before you. This is happening right now um, in wherever you are. The other thing I wanted to introduce was the traditional manner of learning, which is really, you know, it's called kuchi utsushi, from mouth to mouth. You hear something, you, you repeat it. You watch something, you know, an a kata, an action, and you copy it. So learning to copy, uh, emulate through our eyes and ears, this way of learning that comes with the embodied learning I thought we could bring that into the virtual realm. Um, and this would be the foundation to build new works. And the culmination of the fall was um, the students creating new artwork, visual art, and some original plays. And then those original plays, some of them were selected to for this full program of Remotely Kyogen and further workshopped in rehearsals. Um, students would meet three or four times a week with their respective cast and director, um, and then every Sunday would come together and work with our master artist, uh, Sen Nojo, who would give feedback on the work that he had been doing, introduce new kata, introduce ideas, answer questions, things like that. 
So the program, the concept of the program, I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. The whole idea, if I wanted to introduce Kyogen uh, and, and show that new works could be you know, created respectfully from it, I thought it was very important to start with the origin, with the tradition. So we did, a, uh, the, it opens with a traditional play, Tachi Ubai, Sword Stealing, and it is in Japanese, and it's performed by our three master teachers who have over the past 20 years been involved in, in working with students and myself at UHM and, and with whom I've worked in Kyoto um, even longer. Uh, and so it was an honor for me and for the cast to have them open uh, the production and also to share the stage in a way. Um, and gradually through the program, we move away or a little more, a little more distant, become a little more distant from the tradition, uh, visually, um, structurally. And this, so the next piece, Mango Yamabushi, is based on a traditional play, Kaki Yamabushi. Um, and I'll talk more about that one later. So I'll go on to the next one. Uh, Mask Confusion is a play that brings together the Pantalone and Arlecchino of the Commedia dell'arte world with the master and servant of the Kyogen world. In our version, in this version, it's a mistress and Eliana, the servant, um, and they are in search of masks. Okay, so something that's timely brings it to here and now. And then we get to the next piece in the program, which was Earthbound, which was directed by our very own Dr. Maggie Ivanova. Um, and by this time, the audience had, would have seen that master-servant combination a few times. Um, in this play, they get to, to engage with the, the master and servant. It takes those iconic characters, places them in space. We have Martian Captain and Martian Taro and Martian Jiro. And really, this play plays with some of the structural conventions of Kyogen, using them, but really in a playful, playful manner. And then it kind of come back, comes back full circle to a traditional play that is completely re-envisioned by one of our doctoral students, Jane Trainer, um, adapted from Kusabira for the Zoomosphere. And it really does uh, bring home the here and now of a reality for all of us uh, that, you know, placing it in the Zoom room. Um, and the Yamabushi of the original play who's praying away the mushrooms is re-envisioned as a kind of this grown worthy amateur mycologist punster IT guy. Um, and then in between these, this is the inspiration from the, the YouTube video I am a show where it interludes to give the audience a break from constantly having to focus on a play, but also to introduce other elements of Kyogen, beginning with a one minute Kyogen kata, where you learn how to eat. And he ends it with, you know, you too can be a Kyogen actor. Um, and artwork that was inspired by Kyogen from our artists. And then there's a, a short three and a half minute piece called, a, I would term it a uh, Dakugen, uh, influenced by Rakugo and Kyogen. Um, and it's great, great grandma Reitzel um, based on the solo performer's family lore, a story about her great, great grandmother. All right, so that's the program overall for those of you who didn't see it. In the rehearsal process, as I said, they met with the, the teacher, with Senojo Sensei on Sundays, um, where he would introduce Kata. Uh, it was interesting watching him go through this process, like how did he continuously adapt for this virtual realm? Um, to teach so that students could really see what he was doing. Sometimes he would um, meet with students and talk. You know, they had questions, they're exploring things, they had ideas like, how can we do this? What would you do in this case? You know, how do I deal with my breath? So he would answer questions um, for them. Um, we also brought in a comedia uh, master. This is Joan Sherl um, with our, our student, Catherine Ann Restivo, who wrote this play. Um, because it's, you know, I, I felt it was really important to be respectful of the comedia side as well. It's not my expertise. So I really needed to bring um, an expert in um, to guide us on that part of things. I can't go into all of the plays in great detail. So I would, I will focus on a few of them. I'll start with Mango Yamabushi, which was translated by Jane Trainer, who's a PhD in our um, program. Um, it was adapted from Kaki Yamabushi, set on Kauai, and it incorporates familiar place names and animals, you know, to, to bring it 
here and now to the islands of Hawaii to our local audiences and then for those people who are not local it, it still I think uh, is relatable. Um, in the original play, just a quick summary for those of you who haven't ever seen Kaki Yamabushi, uh, Yamabushi, the mountain priest, is, is on one of his pilgrimages on the way home. He gets hungry. He decides to steal some persimmons from a grove. A landowner comes out and discovers him and teases him and ends up making him fly out of a tree. He falls and becomes injured. Um, and we'll look at what happens after that later in videos. Um, in this version, the characters shift somewhat. We have a, a present day Yamabushi, because Yamabushi are still practicing in, in Japan. And so that's reflected also in the costuming that our costumer designed for this Yamabushi. And rather than having the landowner, we have a farmer who's tending his grandmother's uh, mango trees. Okay, so I'd like to kind of guide you a little bit more through this process. And we'll start with this very short clip of uh, Senojo Sensei teaching um, Christine Jamlig Chang, who played the Yamabushi, how to deal with the beads. You know, the beads of the Yamabushi are very important. Um, and you'll notice, perhaps, uh, this is one of his, you know, improvisatory moments. He didn't have the Yamabushi beads handy in his house, so he grabbed a long USB cord. And that is what he is showing her how to use the beads with. This is a short clip of about a minute and a half, uh, but this whole process, this clip was about 15 minutes long. Here we go. Just like this. No, don't do it from inside. Do it from the outside. Thumb go, open your hands like this. Yeah. And then keep your middle finger in like this. Mm -hmm. Bend the other fingers and then turn it upside down. From here, uh, put these hands together. It, Drop it and keep the left finger in. Middle finger in and uh -huh. put, put the uh, other middle, your left hand's middle finger in from the other side. Mm -hmm. Twist it like this. Twist. From Point it towards the farmer, and then mm -hmm. you're bringing it down. down. Okay, so you can see this, you know, it looks like a very quick process, but it was quite tedious, very dedicated performers and teacher. So I want to give you a short clip of this in performance. So we have our Yamabushi um, in the play. This is the point, this is the point after the Yamabushi has fallen out of the tree and demanded that the farmer take him back to his home and nurse him back to health. The farmer is not having it. He's going to leave. And so the Yamabushi is conjuring all his powers through incantation and using the beads. And I'll play this. This is about a minute and a half, two minutes, about two minutes to the end. So you can see what happens. And you can see the use of the beads and how this uh, play happened virtually for us. With these beads of mine, I only have to pray one single prayer, and I will be granted miraculous powers. Boy, I don't want to stick around for this. I must hurry home. Boron. Boron. What is going on? Boron. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Boron. That is the strange power. Boron. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Boron. What is the strange Boron. power? Boron. W, X, Y, and Z, Boron. 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 Oh, how sad. Boron. How sad. Boron. Boron, Boron. Now, do you understand the power of the Yamabushi? Uh, I understand. I understand. In that case, take me to your home and bandage my bruises. I guess I have no choice. Come over here and climb up on my back. Let me climb up. But since you're so hungry, 
Maybe you should eat this stone, Yatana. Ow! 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 All's well that ends well. All's well that ends well. Hey now! Hey! Where are you going? You can't do that to a Yamabushi, you good for nothing. Somebody stop him! You can't do this, you can't do this. You can't do this, you can't. Okay, and here you can see in the final scene, you can see that we maintained, you know, the, the matsubame or the pine tree backdrop. Um, our designer put in a, a nice uh, red sun for a little color. And I'm not sure if you can see, but there's a little indication of some chicken feathers here because that was one of the local birds. Um, instead of turning into a hawk, the Yamabushi turns into a chicken and flies out of the tree. I just wanted to show you a little bit of behind the scenes. So here's our Yamabushi. You can see she's kneeling there and praying down the, um, the farmer. And what you may not notice is that, you know, of course they're not in the same space, but she has to kind of seem like she is and she needs to wear a focus. So her focus in this case is on the refrigerator in the scene shop. Okay, and gave her a marker um, for what to focus on. And you can see, that you know they're performing in isolation but yet they were all together on stage and performing live together virtually um, one of the changes that happens you know you could hear in the lines the fact that um you know he says climb up on my back in the original uh, kakiyama bushi he actually does climb up on uh, the landowner's back but that was very hard to do virtually and so sen nojo had the idea of of throwing the rock um, which worked very well. Okay, I'm going to jump over this very short clip. Okay, I also want to show you a very short clip from Earthbound because I said, you know, this is this is one that that takes many of the structural conventions of Kyogen. Um, here we'll see the yobidashi or the calling out, which is opens up almost any Kyogen play that has a master and servant in it. Um, here we have our Martian captain master um, calling Martian Taro and Martian Jiro the crew. Um, this was directed by Maggie, as I mentioned earlier, and written by Iana Weingard, who's playing um, master, the Martian Taro, um, and uh, many students and the director inputting, um, giving input on this. So I want you to just, normally the master calls out the servants, we'll see him calling out, and you'll get a sense of the play that was incorporated, playfulness with the structure. And I just want to note to, to call attention to this background here, which is actually the yukata fabric that Akira, Ashigema Akira, who is Senojo's father, um, uses as his kind of his keikoba his, for his students. And there's a little um, Akira icon right here, cartoon. Um, and this is from uh, the very first uh, kyogen that was set in space. So this was the second kyogen ever set in space. Okay, we'll watch a short clip of this. I come here before you, a captain from the Martian fleet. I have a mission to lead for which I must travel from Mars to planet Earth. First, I will call Martian Taro before me to request their assistance. Hey, hey, Martian Taro, are you there? Me, Bob, boop. Before you, at your service, Martian Captain. Martian Taro, you came very quickly. The reason I have called you here is to request your assistance for a mission to Earth. Now, where is Martian Jiro? Martian Jiro, are you there? Captain is calling you to the bridge. Having tech issues again. Hello, something Martian Jiro before you. Martian Jiro has come as called. Okay, so those of you who are familiar with Kyogen can see, well, may, may recognize this structure and the bow of Kyogen, but this also maintained um, the idea of kata, of set patterns for actions, but it really, um, you know, said it, okay, if we have our Martians who are doing this, this kata, 
what would that character do? What is our, um, and they developed a new kata for this um, production. And if you have more questions about this, I'm sure Maggie can answer details. And a short clip from Mask Confusion. And this is the one that brings um, uh, Comedia del Arte together with Kyogen. It was written by one of our almost newly minted MFAs. She'll be graduating tomorrow, Catherine Ann Restivo, who has a background in physical theater. Um, and she also designed the masks and plays Arlo Kino and built the masks as well. Um, so this in this particular scene, Arlecchino and Pantalone have just arrived in Hawaii. So we're set at the airport. Pantalone has sent Arlecchino off to uh, find them a free or very inexpensive hotel to stay in while they're here. And Eliana, our servant of the mistress, has been sent off to find masks. And this is where they interact. Because of course you go to the airport, everybody wears masks at the airport, so that's how you'd find them. So this is the inter first interaction of these two iconic um, characters. And you'll see different styles. You know, we're trying to maintain the Kyogen style and um, the uh, Comedia as well in the same image. And in no time at all, I have arrived at the airport. <coughs> a mask! It looks like a cat and has a horn like a demon. Yes, that's scary enough to protect my mistress. Aloha. Ciao. I see you have traveled from a faraway place. Do you need help? Oh, see, I need help following my master's list. But I am so hungry. I don't think I can go on. I need some food. <laughs> I have some candy. Would you like some? Oh, see, I would love some candy. I will give you all my candy if you give me your mask. Okay. Here you go. This will not do. This will not protect my mistress. Oh, that candy was good, girl. But I'm still hungry. Can you read my master's list? Of course. I am very good at reading. Maybe if I help him, he will give me his demon mask. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. So here you can you could see the different the two different styles. Um, I tried to maintain you know some of the Kyogen facings. When you're talking to somebody, you face them completely. Um, on the large actions of Kyogen, while we have more articulated movements of of the Comedia in their vocal phrasings, um, trying to adapt some of that vocal phrasing from traditional Kyogen into the Eliana character in particular as she's performing. Okay. I'll give you a little behind the scenes on this one, and I only have this because uh, Catherine's um, husband did some video while she was recording live for the production. Um, and while we had the Yamabushi in the, on the Kennedy stage recording. That was the only person that came into the theater. Everyone else was in their own homes. Uh, and they basically were turning their homes into recording studios. You know, they're using their Zoom and, and lights you can see everywhere. And so this is part of that same scene that you just watched. And you'll see behind the scenes from the actor's perspective what she is going through. And again, she is, uh, Catherine wrote this play. Um, she's also designed and built the masks that she's wearing. I can go on. I need some food. <laughs> I have some candy. Would you like some? Oh, see, I would love some candy. I will give you all my candy. If you 
if you give me your mask. <laughs> okay. So what you can see, they're not physically in the same space, but they were responding to each other in real time. So it's very much live. Um, and as, a, as an actor, I think it really tuned in their, their, their listening skills. It had to, because that was your primary um, mode of communication. So that's the behind the scenes from the actor's perspective. I just wanna give you the behind the scenes backstage from the director's perspective when we're recording, that's me blacked out because I had to have my camera and, and audio off um, in order to not interfere with the process. I could see the individual squares of each of the performance, their boxes, because everyone was on Zoom. And then we've, I've pinned here below the, the screen that comes from the OBS, the open broadcast system that we used that enabled the operator then to bring in the virtual backgrounds, the lovely virtual backgrounds, and to bring the, the various performers into the same space to perform with each other. So to reflect a little on the process, um, I, I'm grateful for this opportunity to, to do so. It has been, it's, it's just finished recently, so I'm still in that process. But one thing I, I do think that we accomplished, uh, that the students accomplished really, um, was creating some delightful and more importantly for me as an educator, very respectful and informed new works that were inspired by Kyogen. And I think this was possible because of their long engagement with Kyogen, the fall class, learning about it and really investing the time to understand um, many facets of it. And in some ways, I think this group's understanding of Kyogen as an art form is probably more full than if we had the, the in-person live um, training in which case the embodied performance, the technique they would have had more of, and they would have really understood more of the, the breath and the timing and the movement of Kyogen in their bodies, but often they don't have that same kind of um, time to explore you know, the, the, the whole milieu of Kyogen. So in that respect, it, 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 gave, it brought something new into the program. Um, they also understand, I think, that, that the traditional arts, and in this case, Kyogen, is alive and well and kicking in the 21st century. It is changing and adapting with the times. This comes from being able to work with Senojo Sensei, who is part of that you know, generation who is creating new work, um, and also his willingness and openness to, to offer himself his time and suggestions to them and say yeah okay go ahead create these are this is good go with it um, that uh, encounter with Senojo as the master artist did give them a sense of embodied learning they did we started in the fall i taught them uh, a song which they had to learn in japanese first a kota that's used in that, that appears in several kyogen plays they did it in japanese and then they learned it in and they had to figure out how to do it in english i gave them the translation um, so they learned that process of what how phrasing can go in english bringing them into the spring semester when they worked um, very much more in depth with uh, Senojo Sensei, um, who began by introducing some basics to everyone and, and some concepts that they could work on, the idea of phrasing, that when you make a movement, your phrase and your, your, your phrasing of your body and the phrasing of your hand match. So you finish when your, your movement, when your voice finishes, that idea that after a movement, there is this stop, we fix the kata, give people an idea to read it. Um, so these ideas they took and incorporated into their work. And I think overall, they have a very kinetic and intellectual understanding of the fundamentals of the art of Kyogen. Um, they've also learned a lot of tools for acting in a Zoom world, the full impact of which I do not know yet. Um, it's something I'm interested in, in following. As I said in the beginning, outreach is a really big part of our program. You know, these three pillars of this intensive training with master artists, the full scale production and outreach to the community. That took a, you know, we couldn't do outreach in the same way. We can't tour, even educational packets are not really going to be very effective right now since our schools are remote and the kids are tired of the computer. 
So I have long wanted to um, have a repository of our own work in Kyogen, but also a site that's dedicated to Kyogen because Kyogen often gets, you know, it's a sub page on a no website. So this one is completely devoted to Kyogen. And this is also thanks to Jane Trainer, who was our GA um, and is focused on Kyogen. So she was able to, to create the website because I'm a Luddite in that sense. Um, so I hope that it might be useful for some of you as a resource. Um, about Kyogen, it gives the history of Kyogen itself, it talks about performers, costumes, um, stage and staging, um, there's a history of Kyogen at UHM and our process, um, also you can read blogs from the performers, I've built that into our spring course to give them a chance to process openly, but also to give the audience or viewers a chance to see how the performers are getting into this process and then down the road as an archive, but also for others who might be interested in developing or, or creating new Kyogen to understand more about that process and what the students might be going through. Um, by the end of the summer, we hope to also add an archive into this website that will have all videos of all of our UHM uh, Kyogen productions which are performed in English. There um, are 10 previously to this production. Um, eight of them are traditional plays that are translated for production. Um, there is one new play you saw a very brief uh, image of, Derailed. And then one of them is one of the newly written Kyogen plays by our teacher, Sen Nocho. That one was also done in 2017. It was called uh, Tu Yamabushi. And there's much, much more. We will continue adding that. This, this website will be available on into the future. And so I would like to thank you all for coming today. I am open to questions. I wanted to share this last image, which is from our curtain call. Um, we can see the backdrop here. You can see our master performers in here as well. And the song behind this was Shugen, which is the felicitous ending of all Kyogen. Um, plays to close out the performances and we were very honored that Senojo and five others from the Shigeyama family sung this very powerfully together um, and that's the backdrop for our, our uh, curtain call and with that thank you I would ask Maggie to join me and how do I get out of here now haha -ha. there we go <laughs> I'll stop thank you Judy. Okay, thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Julie, for sharing both uh, details about the process, which, you know, again, I'm biased, but um, I'm very much interested in the process because uh, we want to know how that magic is done. So um, I found it particularly fascinating to see the behind the scenes kind of um, recordings and images and all of that, because all of us, you know, Zoom theater is new for us. We're trying to find a way of kind of finding a way, what is this? digital performance all about. I mean, it has existed, we didn't create it, it has existed, right. but how can we find a place to it? So right. how can we use it for instructional purposes as well? So we can get the, uh, the fans, but also our students engaged in that. So right. Right. Um, I found that very fascinating. Um, we have a question from Andrea Stover, who asks, will you continue any work or training on Zoom, or I assume another digital platform here, even when working in person is possible, in what context do you imagine this possible at all? Or hmm. what are your thoughts on that? It's a very good question. Thank you for that question. I, I found it personally, um, I, I would like to find a way to incorporate that as an element. I could see in terms of our program that it can be very useful as, a, as an introductory um, realm to bring the teacher in to introduce, you know, some some fundamental concepts, which I also do. I've been studying Kyogen for many years. I usually I call myself the glue that I would introduce fundamental concepts, basics, so that when the teachers come in, they can build on that. But it's always different getting it from the teacher because that's the master artist, and that's it's really important. So having that um, as as an introductory level um, online uh, to to build um a foundation um, and also to open it up to more people it is difficult in the sense that i mean those of you who have seen the performance some things i didn't show there were sections 
in Kyogen often has a lot of overlapping of lines and there's a build in rhythm and that's extremely different difficult to do in an online platform especially through zoom because you all know that you know there's a leg and you can't build so um, it does limit what you can do vocally um, working with students vocally you have to you can't really do groups you can do one-on-one -on -one, which is also wonderful training um, there is uh, theater nogaku is doing one-on-one -on -one, no vocal training so i can see how it would be useful to work one-on-one -on -one vocally beginning with you know students before bringing an artist over so that can um, help with the expense of bringing in an artist uh, from abroad but also you know it fits in better with their schedule and they don't have to travel quite as much so yes, there are ways of, of incorporating it, and I will be thinking about that some more, but I hope that we can be live the next time. Uh, thank you for that. We, we actually hope to be live as well, um, but it's been amazing how much we managed to accomplish, both in terms of physicality and voice, uh, to fight the difference. So um, I have a question about something that I found interesting in the process is, your request to everybody participating uh, in, in the remotely Kyogen production to record their experiences and, and then format them as blogs that are, are gonna be on the remotely Kyogen uh, website. Could you please talk to us about that a little bit? Because that could be also a resource. Certainly, thank you. That's a good question. Um, th this is kind of serves two purposes in my mind. I mean, one purpose is because as a, an, as a training institution, as we're, we're working on training of the actor, that step of, of keeping a diary or noting, you know, making notes as you go to understand your process, understand your challenges, what you did to work through them, it's very important in that learning process for, for the student. And so that was one reason for doing that. Um, and the other reason, is that I wanted to be able to share that as a blog on the website, um, and those are up, and you can go and look at those uh, now. They were they were posted as as they were were submitted um, to share that experience more broadly of the the students. I mean, I think it, in one sense it gave them more agency. You know, they're 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 central in this process. You know, and and to forefront that a little bit, but also you know as an archive for when individuals are looking, you know, at this um, and someone says, hey, I want to do a Kyogen production. I've had several of my translations that have been done as Kyogen in other institutions. And I wonder, like, what are they using for resources? So I want this to be a resource for um, faculty directors, whatever, who are engaging in this to see, wow, OK, this is this is a process. Like, what do they go through before they even get to the training? How does that training affect them? So you can really see it through the eyes of, of those people who are participating and doing the, the creating. And those aha moments are shared, you know, in those blogs. And uh, wow. they're, for me, also, I mean, there's an immediate feed, it's a feedback loop for me too, to see where are students at? What are they, you know, what are they getting? What, where do I need to intervene perhaps? Or what do I need to add? So it, it served many purposes, uh, but, down the road as an archive and sharing that with a larger population. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to flip your aha moment and ask you, could you please share with us an aha moment for you? What is what, what comes to mind? I know you're still processing, we're still fresh. Um, ah. We only finished about 10 days ago um, with the broadcast. You know, the process itself finished maybe a week early. It's <laughs> all the final edits were done. So, like, out of cases in theater, everything comes together at the very last minute, but it does come together. So right, right. share, please, with us an aha moment for you. Ah, uh, I would, well, there are, I would say two. I mean, one, I've always, you know, I, I've been in, connected with Kyogen for almost, for more than almost three decades. And as I said, watching um, Senojo since he was a child, I know him as Doji growing up and becoming Senojo and turning into a, you know, this powerful performer, director, teacher. But watching the adaptability of this performer, you know, in teaching, um, when we started with the basics, you know, like just in one day, he had three different sessions with three groups so that he could, you know, I, I know you can't focus on 10 people moving, three people in a group and, and every time every session would change because he'd, he'd 
yeah, okay, can't do that. Let's try this. And so, you know, he's, he's moving the camera angle around so he can show different things while he's, he's performing. Um, so seeing that um, flexibility, it's like, aha, you know, like it, it just, it's like it, it, it opens up um, often, I'm sure there are others besides me that have this experience, like in a traditional form, you think, okay, we've got to do it the way it's done traditionally. Um, and if anything, the, the Kyogen, especially the Shigeyama family, are ready to push the boundaries of that box. And so digitally seeing him push these boundaries in terms of how to train was it like, aha, okay, we can do that. Um, and, oh my goodness, I think that the other big one for me is, I mean, I was I have to be honest, I was terrified going into this process because it was so different from what anything I had done. And I wondered about, you know, would it be co cohesive? Would it communicate to the audience what I wanted it to communicate as a whole? Because it is designed as a whole, kind of the scroll unwinding and you understand, you look at traditional Kyogen and then it, we get further and further from it, you know, but you see, does that traditional one resonate through it? There's a pre-show that has also a 15 minute pre-show that gives, you know, the background training. And does that offer resonance through the production as you're, as the viewers are watching. Um, so it's educational without like providing educational materials and pounding you over the head with it. Um, and so after I watched the show, finally, when I could sit back and say, okay, you can't change anything else. I thought, I, I think it accomplishes that. And then I got feedback, you know, via emails from people who commented on that very fact. So there was some validation. I was like, aha, okay, it can be done. It did, um, can be done. Yeah. I, I'm, I, they still need more time on this one though. <laughs> yeah, can, the, the, the pigeon. Yes, can. Um, yes, can. <laughs> um, we have a lot of questions from Pei Beecham. Um, when you're selecting students for your program, do you also look for experience in creating the visual in the visual arts or creating visual arts as well? The backgrounds were fantastic. And I also like Catherine's mask particularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in our department, we are we have MFA programs in acting and in design. And within the design program, program you can focus on lighting or scenic or costume design. And so the backgrounds, I agree, were just stupendous. Um, Laura Nygon Holmgren, who is graduating tomorrow as well, created those. She was she did a lot of deep dives into Kyogen as a form. Um, she also was very influenced by Yamamoto Taro, who is a contemporary um, artist that does Nipponga, like in the traditional um, Nihonga, if you're traditional art, but with contemporary um, uh, images. Um, and he's also a friend of Senojo's, so uh, she was inspired by him. So it depends on, on what program someone is applying for. At the master's level, if they're applying for design, then we are looking for some kind of uh, design um, experience or um, some light there. Um, if in an acting program, we're looking for, for different uh, things. Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, we have, I was just typing uh, a reminder. We have time for one more question um, if from, from the audience, uh, because otherwise you just, you just have to do with me because I have tons of questions. I mean, I was part of this process, but in many ways, it's, instead of answering a lot of questions that actually raised a whole lot of questions for me. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have, I would rather hear your questions if you have them. Uh, and, and if you don't, I have well, a question for Maggie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please. Who, who directed Earthbound? And um, yeah, I would put the aha moment to you. Like, is there an aha moment in directing, you know, this n original piece of Kyogen? I think the aha moment for me was because I, I, I'm, 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 I have a strong visual sense, but also I'm developing a strong oral sense as well. So the aha moment for me was to create a sense of otherness 
while at the same time recognizing that that otherness is part of the self. So that's kind of a kind of complicated thing. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I mean, this is a play about Martians coming to Earth. But in many ways, actually, yeah. I wanted to indicate that we are the same. We share a lot of things. So the way the way Kyogen attacks, critiques, laughs at, and prompts us to laugh at shared humanity. So. I was interested in, in imagining what it is that we and Martians might be sharing together. And visually, that was very interesting because we, we had, um, I think costume came into play here because we had the familiar in the unfamiliar. So for most Western viewers, they would rec rec recognize the Star Trek kind of polo shirts mm -hmm. and then the, the Kyogen um, costuming. So the combination between the familiar and the unfamiliar. But I was interested in exploring that in an oral sense. So. If you remember, those of you who saw the show, and you, you certainly saw it several times, actually, but I think the aha moment for me was to take the familiar uh, Kyogen flute or Japanese flute, the Shakuhachi, and, and actually ask a, a fellow East West Center student here to play a tune that we don't associate with the Shakuhachi. And that was a dance tune from Bulgaria, you know, bias here. And, and seeing how the house, um, folks responded to that. Um, many actually liked it. I mean, they said it was, there's something haunting about it, which I think is part of Kyogen, right? I mean, in the rhythm, in in the dance itself, it, it worked quite well. So that was the aha moment for me. I mean, we can make Kyogen and, and, and Kyogen allows us to open up the unfamiliar within the familiar. Um, so for me, that kind of flipped because I knew the tune, the, the tune was familiar for me, but the, the whole dance in Kyogen and choreographing a dance in Kyogen is like, whoa, okay, I can't do that. <laughs> um, so kind of flipping, but uh, figuring ground was was quite interesting for me as the entire process in, in Earthbound. So mm -hmm. that was the aha moment for me because it really encouraged playfulness um, yeah. and mischief, partly. There was a lot of mischief there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I, I, I would agree. I think overall, this this ability of Kyogen in general, you know, through these archetypes, you know, to to present, we all recognize, you know, that common humanity, no matter who it is, and to to give you an opportunity to laugh at the absurdity of everyday life, especially now. <laughs> yes, we need that. Yeah. Although I would say that some distance would help with that after as well you know once we feel a little more secure and distance is not so much of an issue we'll be able to laugh better at that i hope, mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. um we we are almost at time so i would invite one more question if we if if there is any that the, the participants would like to to ask um otherwise um you know, feel free to also email me if you have questions. Um, as I am JSA Vice President, my email address is actually on the JSA website. Um, so feel free to email me if you have any questions and I'll make sure to forward them to Julie Yezi, who I hope will be happy to answer them. Oh, I'm perfect. And that's Julie. So let's just cut the mediator. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and go directly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julie, for this wonderful presentation. I Thank hope you all so much. Yeah. Um, and we look forward to seeing what happens to the Remotely Kyogen website and the resources that continue to develop and be made available through it. So um, on behalf of JSA, sincere gratitude, a big mahalo for joining us and sharing with us um, the magic of creating Kyogen. Thank you all. Okay. Bye.